Howdy folks, Richard Avery, Titanium Computing. And I want to get into some hacker horror stories, right? I get calls, some good and bad. Sometimes people are calling me as a business owner to help them with their IT or their cybersecurity problems. And they don't really quite know how far down the rabbit hole they've fallen. Sometimes it's too far. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, Business owners don't know what IT people know, and IT people don't know what cybersecurity people know. We're not lawyers, we're not neurologists, we're not therapists, and they're not IT professionals. So there's a lot of best practice that happens or fails to happen uh, in every industry when you go outside of that core industry and you touch others. So in this case, uh, the story begins with the history that we have as a, uh, uh, personally, uh, with the DOD. I have some other people who were in the military who had clearance in my office. Um, but at this point in time, uh, I've done work with multiple other three-letter agencies. And one of the reasons that they're willing to work with me and they're willing to work with Titanium is that uh, I have a clearance. So they can go look me up in JPASS and I can work with the FBI or I can work with the NSA or I can work with other agencies and they can say, hey, this guy had clearance. We can go look it up. We can confirm that there's a certain minimum level of understanding. We can qualify what he did, right? And that has happened and has helped us out in the past. So co a company reached out and said, hey, we're having some problems. We sent out a... $5.6 million wire transfer. And the wire transfer has gone out and we were made notification. We were given a notification of it by the secret service knocking on our front door and saying, Hey, we've got your money. Well, that's never a good thing. And the secret service said, Hey, we'll give you your money back, but we need to have somebody who understands the situation say that your network is okay and that you're good to go. So they got introduced to us. The secret service kind of looked at my record and said, yeah, sure. If the, if these guys certify that you're okay, then we'll give you your money back. So we went forward, we started diagnosing, uh, the secret service told us who it was, uh, which I'm not going to mention here. Uh, they were tracking it because they were they had already tracked wire transfers to that account address. So they knew who was it was using and they knew a bit about the attacker team, the, the APT that was in charge of that address. So they gave us that information. We started to deconstruct their network. Everything was dialing home to that particular country and that particular APT's command and control. So it was a matter of how do we flash this hardware how do we replace this situation but from a normal standpoint man it looked really bad so bitdefender uh was turned off and disabled on every single machine either the engine wasn't updating or the signatures were like literally flagged at 0, 0.0 so they were loading a false signature set instead of actually loading up real signatures to protect the the, the machine with once we manage to go through this process, the entire time the Secret Service is saying, hey, can we have a copy of those firewall logs? And the IT company who was in charge at the time, because we're, we're you know, putting the fire out, we're trying to do incident response. Uh, the IT company just kept not sending over the firewall log. And the owner turns to me, she's like, why is this, why is this taking a week for them to get the firewall log to send it to the Secret Service? And I told her really plainly, they don't know how. That's why. So this situation uh, culminates in, well, how did they get in the network? Oh, well, there's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of bells and whistles that we can find and boxes we can check. But we eventually find out what the culprit was. The firewall hadn't been updated since 2019. Uh, when we were coming into this environment, it was 2022. And they had all of their equipment. This was ubiquity uh, equipment 
being pushed into the cloud to manage all of their customers. This is just an IT company. IT companies are great if you're hiring an IT company to do IT things. But in this case, they were an IT company doing security things. They didn't really know what they were doing. So they had configured all of their customers to be in the, a single ubiquity instance in Microsoft Azure, and they had never updated that instance. So it was vulnerable to Log4j, which was a significant attack platform uh, vulnerability rampant in the internet a couple of years ago. Uh, Log4j shell was a big deal. It still is if people haven't been uh, patching or maintaining. Log4j shell is going to be a, uh, as common an attack vector as an old you know, RDP exploit or an SMB v1 exploit if people aren't patching and maintaining their systems. So the attackers got into the IT company's infrastructure via Log4j shell took over their ubiquity cloud instance, cloud controller, that gave them access to all of their customers. They just happened to target the biggest customer first, which was the customer that we then acquired. And we were maintaining them happily for years. So they did get their money back, which is the important part in this whole story. So you've got a significant play-by-play. -play. You've got IT people doing IT people things. IT people not doing cybersecurity people things and making mistakes along the way is pretty par for the course. So the takeaway here is make sure that you're doing really simple best practice. I talked to somebody who's in a, a very high end incident response team. They fly around nationally. And I asked them, I said, how often is this are you being flown out for some complicated zero day attack? that's breaking through a firewall or compromising a VPN or doing all of these things. And their response to me was never. It's always a best practice failure. It's always a shared password. It's always a single event. Something could have been patched. Something could have been fixed in advance. They just didn't. And that's where all of the failure came from. So this is the start of our hacker horror stories. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope that this was entertaining. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Maybe check out some of our other videos here and here. Um, maybe my editor will put one up here too. I don't know. We'll find out. You'll find out along with me. Thanks.